I'm going to skip forward a little bit here with our knowledge and understanding of Sono, in that I'm going to open up an existing project. I'm only doing this so that we can see the focus of this tutorial more closely and more relevantly whilst I talk about the user interface. A lot of new users say that the user interface is intimidating initially. In fact, for this introduction to Sonar, I'm using my brother as a guinea pig. He's familiar with other doors, Cubase and Logic, but not Sonar. So I thought there couldn't be a better working example of what new users to Sonar frequently ask to know. And his first question when he opened up Sonar and saw a project running was, goodness me, what a lot to learn. <laughs> it was something like that anyway. I think you can guess what he really said. So let's go about addressing that and demystifying the user interface. What we see here is the default screen set, a screen set simply meaning the way that everything is presented on your screen there, how it's set out. Because you can move things around or hide things, you can set it how you like. And although intimidating, it's actually made up of specific areas of functionality. We've already looked at the main tools above horizontally here in the control bar but I'm going to explain their functionality a little bit more now. We've seen that these modules are split and are moved around for our convenience. So as I say, I'm going to now cover them in further detail. At the left are the various tools here in the tool module, including the move option. That means I can drag an existing recorded clip to a new position. I don't really want it there, so I'm going to edit and undo that. To its right is the snap module. Now this means that when I do move an event, or trim its length maybe, I can specify to a specific time or beat reference where that should be at. It's set by default to that division point at the moment, but we can drop down and choose from any of these available options. By the way, if you don't want to see a module, or if one is hidden already, right click and check or uncheck relevantly there. The transport module is next. Now the functions here are self-explanatory I think on the whole. Rewind, record, stop, etc. And we've also got these buttons underneath to return to the start of our project or over there by clicking at the end of our project. So use any of those to navigate to the beginning or the end or somewhere in between by dragging that slider. Okay, simple enough. That's the transport module. The time displays here and presently displays like this. But you can right click on the display to choose another format of your liking. Or if you want to, you can just click on it to toggle through those available options. Underneath, but smaller, are options to read or adjust the tempo, the time signature, sample rate and bit depth too. You could click on the tempo or the time signature to call open the dialog to adjust. So, for example, this means at some point during your project, after you've already established an existing time signature, you can change it at specific points along the timeline. You might start at bar 1, at 4-4 four, four time, but maybe at bar 9 change to 3-4 for one bar, and then revert back to 4-4, four, four, or whatever, whatever you want to do. Next along is the mix module. You can stipulate whether to solo, mute, arm a track ready for recording, etc, etc here. There are also options to bypass effects, or automation settings too. So as you can see, these modules all take on different functionality. For example over here, the punch module doesn't have to stay over there by the way, I could relocate it, but either way this allows us to stipulate where and when to overdub or create a new recording on our timeline. Related to it is the loop module, and this allows us to create multiple takes of a section. Maybe we'd like to record a specific vocal line repeatedly until we get it right. Well we could use the loop module to assist with that. Now I'm using a wide or full screen here, however if I resize the user interface to a smaller width, then maybe not all your modules will be visible. I'm going to go back to full screen, and in fact I'm going to leave that there for the moment discussing the modules. I'll talk about them more as and when we need them. Now I'm saying this because I want to look at other user interface areas now. The left hand area over here vertically is the inspector area. As you can see it's comprised of three main tabs. Now the inspector area is used to look at the properties of our recordings on individual tracks. You can use those three main tabs to flick between clip properties, track properties and pro channel functionality. Though a thing, but I'd have to check. I think you can only use the pro channel if you are using Sonar Platinum, as I am doing here. Anyway, if you deselect them so none are active, what gets viewed instead here where the inspector is are the specifics for the master track. 
i.e. your main output channel, that all your individual audio and MIDI tracks get routed to. You'll notice horizontally at the foot is this display menu tab. Click on it to reveal what's on view for these master track channels. You can check or uncheck as desired. Maybe you don't want to have the pan control on view. Well, uncheck it. I do want it actually, so I'm going to bring it back. And as you do this, you'll notice that the vertical space taken up gets reduced and reveals more of the panel above it. Incidentally, the inspector panel here can be temporarily hidden from view when you don't wish to see it at a specific moment. Simply use the arrows at the far left there to collapse it to a single left hard-edged position strip. This works when the inspector is docked at the left-hand side. I'm just going to expand it by clicking there again. Now I mentioned there that this works when it's docked. If you want to undock it, click the adjacent button to its right to float it and reposition. I prefer it docked, so to redock, click on that button there and that redocks it, again at the left hand side. Now if you prefer to dock it at the right hand side, choose that button and drop down and choose appropriately there now at the right hand side. Now I actually want to take it back to the left, OK? So. I'm going to pause for the moment and we'll continue looking at the other modules and views next.